What's up guys, welcome to another video. Um, as I said, I, I'm going to try and do uh, more videos now, so I'm going to be doing one today. And we're just going to be continuing doing our logic that we were doing for our um, weapon equipment, uh, or equipping the weapon, sorry. Um, so, uh, I just probably should show uh, what I've been doing, because I think I've done a little bit extra on the code. So let me just go into our... Uh, I can just go over here into the player character. And... Okay, there's going to be one thing. Um, okay, let's just see. So over here I have created a shoot um, mechanic. So I could like test the weapon e uh, equipping. So this is very simple. So I just have our input action shoot. Uh, if you don't know how to add these inputs, you can just go into settings, project settings. And you can go into input, and you can just create a new action mapping over here. Set up what you want it to be called. In my case, it's shooting, or shoot. Then I just use, um, or I add a new input, and I just say left mouse button, or whatever you want it to be. And it's over here where you can add like stuff for the controllers, if you want it for PS4, etc. So, but I already have that set up. And then you just right click and call that, whatever you call that, shoot in this case. Then I just have a valid for my equipped item. That's over here. And if this is valid, we're going to be able to use the item that we have equipped. And so I just have this uh, custom event over here. If I double click on it, it's just a custom event uh, called unknown in client. So over here, and you can make it reliable. And I have two inputs, one for the weapon trace range, this is basically the range of the weapon. And this is the item itself, so it's just a master item uh, input. And so I just uh, I just have this default value over here, and I just have the equipped weapon plugged into the item. And what I do here basically is, I just track from the item, I get the weapon details. Then I just break the struct and I'm going to get all of these values that I'm going to need. First thing that I do is that I drag from the weapon type and I do a switch because we're going to want to have different kinds of shoot or use item uh, depending on the type of weapon. So for example for full auto I just set a timer uh, then I drag from this event, call it fire and over here I do a uh, multi-line trace by channel And that was a mistake because uh, I guess it works, but I didn't want a multi line trace, I just want a line trace, but it's okay. So, if you're using a full auto, we're gonna want to fire by an event. This time is basically gonna be the rate of fire from our weapon details. And just make sure you check in looping. And this line trace over here is just uh, from the start, we're just gonna get our ADS camera. So the camera that uh, we use when we're aiming, we get the roll location, we plug it into start, then we get the forward vector. We multiply that by the range of our weapon, and then we add the roll location um, together with this multiply, and then we add it into the end. And then we just have the draw debug type for duration, because um, we want to be able to see what we're shooting. And right now I'm not really checking for any hits, um, like for damage I'm going to do that a little bit later on. I just have, uh, I just set server uh, set is shooting, and that's a custom event that I've created. So right click custom event, call it server set is shooting, and I just make it uh, reliable and run on server. And I create an input called shooting, and I just drag the shooting variable into over here, and I set it, and make sure that this variable is replicated. This value over here, uh, the reason that this is here, is so we can set on the server that we are shooting, so we can play an animation over here in our uh, mesh. I'm going to show you how to get that in a minute. Then this delay is basically the duration uh, of the rate of fire. So we want to play and uh, like we want to play this animation for the rate of fire. I think I'm going to change this value because I think it's wrong, but uh, we'll get back at, uh, back to it in a minute. And then I just play the same server set is shooting, but I s set it to false because after you shoot, you want the animation to end. And then because this is on the loop, every if you have your um, your shooting like pressed, you're gonna shoot on fully automatic, so it's gonna keep shooting bullets at the rate of fire of the weapon. Now for the semi auto, um,
Okay, so for the semi-auto, I basically do the same thing. And for the side album as well, because it's a single shot. The ADS camera and uh, the logic over here for the start and the end is exactly the same as uh, up here. But uh, instead of having a timer, we just have the, this normal code. And then you just shoot and set the same thing. But over here, I have set it a little bit different. That's, I think, what we're going to have to do. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drag from this sequence length. Uh, you're probably going to have to create this. This comes from our animations, part of our item details. You can break that. And then get the shoot animation, and you can get the length or the sequence length of that animation. So you can know when to repeat the animation uh, or end the animation after um, you stop shooting. So we just want to know the time to stop that animation, and that's the sequence length. And then this server set is shooting, the same one as up here. And I'm just going to try and drag from this sequ sequ uh, fuck sake. sequence length. I'm a little bit tired, so I apologize. Um, I'm just going to drag this into the duration, because I think that's the correct value. And you can see that this event over here is another custom event called client stop shooting. Uh, make it reliable and make it on run on the only client or execute on the running only client. And then you want to call a clear and then validate timer. So you can drag from the return value over here on this timer, drag from it and call it. Just connect it up. And this is for when we actually release the shoot button, we want to stop shooting. So if we are in fully automatic, we want to stop shooting. So that's just a, um, a check to make sure that we actually stop shooting when we want to. And I think that's everything I did before. I think everything over here is the same. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to show you uh, just over here. I'm not sure if I've show, shown you the, um, the animation blueprint. So I'm just going to double click that open. And for it's the same thing as all the other variables over here. You can just get the shooting and use ADS. Just right click and promote a variable and just set it over here uh, you know in this sequence and I'm not sure if I have shown you our anim graph so you already have this so inside the arms anims we're gonna have a lot of states um, and you can take a look at them and this is very intu intuitive to do because um, basically from this idle to equip you just want to make sure if we are equipping and then uh, oh sorry going back from the equip to the idle you just want to know well if we are not equipping and basically these animations all run based on this so the names over here are gonna have a variable over here that is equivalent you basically just want to from him down the sides to shoot you just want to make sure that you're shooting and from shoot to him down the sides you're just going to use well is it not shooting and i guess that's a mistake so drag and not boolean and enter the transmission. And you do basically the same thing for all the other stuff. I'm not going to be showing you um, like every single one of them because as you can see, wait, am I doing this wrong? Just uh, let me see. Because going from him down the sides to walk, it should be if you are not. Oh, okay, this. Okay, I mixed the error, sorry. You do not want a knot over here. So basically, when the arrow is going up, you want the not shooting, and when the arrow is going down, you want is shooting. So this one should have a not shoot. There you go. So that's the, the correct way. I'm sorry, and it's the same thing as this one on all the others. You can just take a look and see how many I did. And basically, inside these little notes, it's just getting from the arms anims. That's over here. You can break it and just get the correct animation. In this case. Because it's the shoot animation, you just want to get the shoot animation and plug it into the sequence. If you're not sure how to get this little input over here, you can just drop any animation into your, your graph. And then you can just go over here into the pin on the first one, and it's going to get exposed. So that's easy as well. So I'm just going to compile and save and now quickly show you what I have. I probably should have shown you all of this in the last video. But, um, you know, I just wanted to show the level design on the other one. So I can go over here and you, we have our store. I, I believe I've shown you how to do this. And when we actually buy the plasma rifle, 
is going to get stuck into our back. And then if I press 1, that's our primary weapon, we're going to get the animations and the rifle. Then we can aim down our sights and we can shoot. And you can see the animation playing and the bullets going to the middle of the screen. Now the animations is really bad because we do not have you know the correct animations for this because we are using we are scavenging animations from Mixamo and trying to blend them together so they're not going to look good uh, either way just, just to have something that works actually with the logic so you can see that the rifle is working perfectly and you can shoot and eat stuff you know that's what we wanted I'm not sure if I I've shown you how to do this logic and how to put our weapon like into slots I'm just gonna go over it so you can see. I'm I'm really don't remember. Sorry. Let me know in the comments uh, if you if I forgot to show you anything. Let let me know in the comments. I'll do a video on it explaining everything because uh, this has uh, been a little bit confusing. And there you go. So over here is when you actually equip from the slots. So I have like um, as we created an input equip from slot. I have a slot one, slot two, three, and four, and each one has um, like its own slot variable so the primary weapon slot the melee weapon slot etc i think i've shown you this uh, but i probably didn't show you how to assign um, bot weapons um, like uh, to equip them in the back and the way that we do that is by spawning the item so we basically have this uh, variable over here um, event sorry Basically, when you buy an item from that button, you just get the play currency. So you basically uh, reduce the money that you have, and then we're just gonna call the server spawn item. It's gonna have two inputs: the item details that you bought and the character mesh that you're just gonna plug. Uh, you can drag from over here the mesh and plug it in. And the item details come from the the buy item from the widget. I believe I had that in the video as well. And then you just get the spawn actor. Uh, you can spawn a new actor. The class is going to be the class from the details of the item details. Then you can get a socket transform from the car mesh. Make sure that this is in RTS parent bone space and the in socket name is on the holster socket name. I think I have shown you this in another video, but uh, it's better just to go over it again. Always spawning our collisions. And then you just attach the return value uh, into the mesh, uh, the character mesh, into the socket name over here from the item details. You can snap to target and then check will simulated bodies. And then depending on the selection of the item type or the weapon type, you just assign it to its correct slot. So is it a primary slot, like it's a full or auto or semi-auto weapon? Is it a melee, it's going to the melee weapon slot? Is it a sidearm, goes into the sidearm slot, etc. Uh, and the equipment as well. And then you actually do the slots over here. When we press one, you're going to equip it. What does the equip do? You just have your slot, and then you have your parent. Uh, you can see what it is. I've already shown you. It's a, the first the slot is the slot from over here, and the mesh from up here. This is on the only client. Then you call a server attach item on the server. Uh, and you need to cast to the master item over here from the target. And then I'm just going to do a is valid of our equipped item that we have from over here in the variables. Then I'm just going to get the weapon details. And then I'm going to break it to get the socket name. We're going to need that for the attached to component. And we're going to get our equipped item and we're just going to drag from it and do an attach to component as you can see over here on the screen. And if it's valid, we're just going to go and do that. We're going to snap to target. The parent, again, is the parent over here or the mesh. The socket name comes from the item details. And then we're just going to go into the set actor transform. The actor that we set is going to be the target over here in the event. The new transform is a get socket transform uh, from the parent. And the socket name comes from the end socket name because um, now we have two socket names, so we can have one for the holster and one from the actual end position. And just make sure it's RTS per and bone space and plug that into the new transform. Make sure you teleport and then you attach the component. Again, I think I'm doing that twice, so probably don't need this twice, but it's basically the same thing that as I did. 
before ovarian there's attached to component and then we're going to set the diamandums over here to the ones that are in this um, this break so that or that one is the same and then the equipped item we just set it to our target and that's pretty much it so then remember over here in the animations we're going to get this and the, the these amandums that's why it's important to override them and I think that's everything that I need to show again I'm not sure if I forgot to show anything if there's anything that you're watching and it uh, it's missing or you don't understand you can leave me a comment and I'll make another video on it really quick but this is pretty much it on firing uh, a weapon the only logic that I need left to do is the melee weapon but that's I think I'm gonna do uh, after we have correctly done the firearms and I'm probably gonna make some change over here if we need to because I need there, I think there's a bug. If you actually buy two weapons, they are going to like create two meshes. I'm probably gonna need to check, um, like to destroy the one if the, it's the same weapon or something. I don't know, but I'm gonna uh, do that in the next video because this one I'm just showing you the code. And I, I forgot to say over here in this valid, if it's not valid, meaning we don't you don't have any equipped item, we're just gonna go straight to. You. Let me see it's a real confusion yeah you just go straight to ignore this attached to component just go into set actor transform and it will do the same thing i think that's all the code that i want to show i already shown you all of this code before i believe i probably already shown you this code but uh, you know it's just better to you know make sure everything is set up so yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you have any doubts or something doesn't make any sense let me know in the comments and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye